So I always say the coolest thing about learning to make prints by hand is that you can do it at home on your kitchen table. And granted, I'm not at my kitchen table, I'm actually outside on the back porch, but I'm gonna show you how to do this so that when the class is done and you don't have access to a press, you can still make prints just with simple tools. So I have my gloves and I have my wooden spoon, which is gonna be my press. I'm gonna print with my, my wooden spoon. My hard brayer. Don't have a soft one for this, you want a hard one. Some tape, you always want to have tape around. Then I'm going to have two inking knives, one for each color. And then I have my ink and a palette. So I'm going to mix up the ink and then get going. So what I have here is some extra ink. I have some white, which is the opaque white, and then a little bit of yellow ochre. And I'm going to mix those together see how I'm mixing the ink. The ink is going to be stiff. You want to have a stiff ink for this printing. Relief printing works best with a stiff ink. I'm going to pre-mix your ink for you for this assignment so that it's, rich, it's uh, just ready to go. Everyone's going to print the same color. The project is really just a let's get going and let's move you into printing type of project. So the ink needs to be stiff, so the way you can check the viscosity of the ink is by picking it up and letting it drip, and you can see it's barely dripping, it's very slow, so the ink is a good stiff ink. You can also check it by doing this and seeing what type of drop time the ink has from the inking knife to the slab. I think that I need to put a little bit more yellow ochre into this. That's better. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a drawdown, and a drawdown is a way in which you can analyze the ink that you have mixed and its uh, color and opacity relationships. So I have a piece of the same type of paper where we're going to be printing on, or I'm going to be printing on. I have a clean inking knife. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little bit of ink that I just mixed and I'm going to place it at the top of my paper here. And I'm going to clean that off my knife. And then I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to just draw that ink down the paper. And at the very bottom then I'm going to smash the ink, I guess you would say. So the motion is that you draw the ink down and then when you get to the bottom of your section that you have moved the ink through, then you're just going to push the knife closer to the paper and sort of smash the ink. So this will give you two variations of the ink that you have just drawn down the paper, a thinner version and a thicker version. So this is how you're going to be able to tell what colors you've mixed and the um, intensity of that color and also the integrity of that color against the paper. So I was looking to mix up a nice cream color and I've done that and it looks like its relationship to the paper um, is a good contrast. So this is what we're going to go with. So I want to remind you that a lot of the stuff that we're using for this first project is communal, so it belongs to all of us. So the block that I've made and the shield. Now you'll see that the shield has some thin parts to it, so you need to be careful with it so that you don't tear the shield. If you do tear it, then you can just use some packaging tape and tape it and then trim the tape down. Um, but you need to be careful with it all, please. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to ink up the block and then pull a print. So first things first, I'm going to put out a ribbon of ink. So a ribbon of ink, that's a ribbon of ink. I'm going to put a ribbon of ink out onto my palette or into my inking slab. Smooth that ribbon of ink out. 
I'm going to take my clean brayer and roll out that ribbon of ink. I'm not going to take my brayer and pick up ink and then roll it. I'm always going to remember to use my inking knife to lay out a ribbon so that I don't get a gloomy amount of ink out and also so that if there's something on my brayer I don't put it into my ink. So I'm going to just apply the ink to the block. So we're, we're printing a wood block, so it's going to retain the grain of the wood. We want that. You don't want to fill that in. You want to retain that. So depending on how much ink you put down, that will determine how much that grain shows. So that's an aesthetic choice that you can make. You need to make sure that the block is fully charged, though, otherwise it won't print correctly. So like this would not be fully charged this is getting close to being fully charged. So you can see the difference. You can see the difference in the color. Look how much uh, more opaque this color looks than that. And you can also see difference in the texture of the ink layer. So you can see now that the block is starting to get full. And then put some more ink on it though. So you can see that there are places where I've come off the block in the image area and, and transferred ink to the shield. So luckily the shield is there to protect the block from the ink. We want to minimize the amount of times that we clean the block because of uh, the idea of solvents and oil from the cleaning penetrating the wood. Even though the block has been sealed, eventually it will start to penetrate. So we want to want to keep the air is clean that we need to keep clean so that we don't have to use solvents and oil and simply green on those areas to remove any excess ink. So I'm going to charge the, the roller up and then ink the block some more. The block is pretty full now so I'm going to remove the shield carefully. I'm going to put the rails on that I made and this will help to um, in the printing to keep the paper level. I'm going to get my first piece of paper for printing. So here's my paper and I have my registration holes at the top. I'm going to go ahead and put the pins through the holes. So if you'd like you can put a couple pieces of tape at the top and tab the tape so it's easy to remove. And then once your paper's been laid down on the surface you don't want to uh, move it because if you move it side to side or something it may uh, smudge the image. With what we're doing that's not too big of a deal that's why we're starting where we're starting and also what's nice with the registration pins is that you can pick up your paper and you can see how the printing is going. So you can see that even if I just put pressure with my hand onto the paper that that's going to begin to transfer some ink. But instead I'm going to use my wooden spoon. And our prints are dimensional objects, so I'm not too worried about if you create a visible embossment on the back with this print because it's going to be inside the box that we're going to make with the image. So you can actually, if you'd like, go around and find the edge of your shape and that can kind of help us to be a guide during the printing. So I'm going in circles and I'm going to go all the way down my paper to get to the bottom of the image area. So because of my registration pins and my tape I can pick my print up and I can check it to see how it's printing. I think it, the print looks good so I'm going to remove my tape. Whoops.
and there's my first proof. So I'm going to take that and put it on the drying rack and then do at least two more prints before we move on to the next stage.